by popular request, a few guys wanted to see me put together my fruitcake, even though I'm not freeze drying it. So, I'm going to do this video. Uh, I'll try to make it not as boring and as long as possible. We'll just kind of shorten it up and show you the steps, and I'm going to make some fruitcake. I made a rookie mistake in these days and times, you know, the hard times we're in right now, of assuming or taking for granted that I could go to Walmart at this time of year and buy my candied fruit. I spent probably three hours driving around uh, the metro <laughs> trying to find candied fruit in the stores and I couldn't find it anywhere. And this time of year is when they normally put that in there because you need to make a good fruit cake. You need to age that for about a month. So I ended up having to order next day delivery from Amazon for my fruit. So there you are. That's a rookie mistake. Don't take for granted that the stuff you want this holiday season is going to be in the stores. <laughs> All right. So I had a really, really good recipe, and I cannot find it to save the life of me, but I found one that looks very similar, so we're going to go with that one. And what I got here is, uh, let's see, let's do it in order of this. Four ounces of diced lemon peel. Now, these are eight-ounce tubs, so I'm going to put half a tub of that in there. So, four ounces of lemon peel. Four ounces of orange peel. Again, this is an eight ounce tub, so we'll put half of that in there. Four ounces of citron. Half a tub of that. Eight ounces of pineapple. So we are going to use the whole tub of my pineapple. I might chop those up just a little bit. I don't know how to look. Eight ounces of cherries. So I got green and red, so I'm going to put, but I am going to cut these up. Let me get it a bowl. Because I want them half. All right, let's put half of these in here. And probably about the same amount of the red cherries. as we put it in the bowl. Okay, so my gloves are all sticky. I'm going to go rinse these off and I'll be right back. No sense in wasting a pair of gloves. Okay, four ounces of walnuts. And this is an eight ounce bag. So I'm going to use half that bag. Four ounces of pecans. I'm going to cut those up a little bit too. Probably just cut these in half. Just like that. Let's make it a little bit less chunky. But you still want to get a nice nut in it. Eight ounces of diced dates, dried diced dates. 
and I think this is an 8-ounce pack, so we'll put the whole pack in there. There we go, going in. And 8 ounces of raisins. And this is a 12-ounce, so 3 quarters. Two thirds of the bag of these. I'll probably just put the whole thing in. And that's it. Now we're just going to give this a good mix. Now, ideally, I'd have done this yesterday and let these soak overnight. But I didn't have that luxury because by the time my package got here from Amazon, it was too late in the day, evening, to do anything. So I'm going to quarter a cup in there and just going to drench those over the vegetables. Vegetables. Come on, John. The uh, fruit. Get those all soaking in that. Now, I gotta go to the store and get me some cheesecloth. I thought I had some. And some juice. So I'm gonna let that soak for several hours. So I'll see you in several hours. Okay, so we've let that fruit set for several hours. Ideally, that would have been overnight. And what I did is, I went ahead and went into that fruit and cut up those pineapple chunks because I got the thing and they were too big. And I also added another three quarters of a cup of the brandy to make it a total of a cup to let that fruit, fruit soak. So that's been soaking in that for several hours. But now we need to move on. So what I have here is a pan that I want to stick in the oven. And it has water in it. I'm going to put plenty of water in it. About halfway full. It's a deep roasting pan. And we're going to put that on the bottom shelf in the oven. That way when we bake our fruit cake on the shelf above it, there's humidity in the oven. And you need that to keep maintaining the moisture so it don't dry, dry out. So my oven is pre- heating to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to stick this in the bottom of the oven. Okay, so we're going to take my fruit that I've covered, had that covered the whole time. We're going to remove the plastic and we need to drain off any liquid that's left in there if there is any. I really don't expect there to be any liquid much left in there. All right, we'll put that back into the big bowl. We'll set this aside because we'll use it later. What we're going to do now is we're going to coat that fruit and nuts with about a quarter of a cup of flour. We'll start with that. We're going to toss it around in there and make sure everything gets coated. Let me get my gloves. I probably could have let that drain just a little bit more. So far, I'm going to say I put in three quarters of a cup, maybe, of flour. But I just want to make sure everything looks well coated. And it's getting there. There you go. That's all well coated. I rinse my hands. Okay, so now we're getting ready to do our batter. 
first thing we need to do is cream one half pound, one cup or one half a pound of butter. So that's two sticks of my softened butter. And to that we are going to add one half cup of brown sugar. That's going to be a packed half cup. There's a quarter. And I'm using dark brown sugar. There's a half. And one half cup of molasses. And I got me a good original molasses. One half cup. There's a quarter. And there's a half. Let's raise that up on there. sure everything's getting incorporated well scrape off the sides of the bowls all right while that's beaten we are going to put in one uh, five eggs total one egg at a time Okay, that's pretty well mixed together. Now we got to do our dry part of the batter. So we're going to put one and a half cups of flour. One teaspoon salt. One teaspoon baking powder. Not soda, powder. One teaspoon allspice. One half teaspoon of nutmeg. One half teaspoon of ground cloves. And one half teaspoon of ground ginger. Mix that all together with a fork here. Make sure everything gets evenly distributed. All right, we're going to set that off to the side because I got to get my pans ready for this batter when we put it together. Now, I'm not sure. I'm going to do small miniature loaves because it's just my brother and I. How many of these I'm going to use? I got two different sizes. These are a little bit smaller, but I got six of those. Then these bottom ones, I got four of those that are just slightly bigger. So I'm going to start with the smaller ones. And we'll see. I won't do the other ones, line the other ones. We need to grease these and line these with wax paper. So what I have here is some shortening. whatever you want you could probably even spray them I'm just gonna rub some shortening in those make sure 
sure they're well covered. Now we are going to line these up with parchment paper. What I'll do is cut down the corners like that. So let's get this all mixed up together now. Let's remix the uh, liquid part of the batter. This is the leftover that we drained from the fruit of the uh, brandy. So we're just going to be adding that kind of too as we go. Keep it nice and liquidy. Let's scrape the sides down. This is an old mixer. I kind of wish I had the one that... You swing those <laughs> the head out of the way because it's always in the way. It makes it hard to scrape things down. I think this is about 10 years older than I am. I'm about ready to retire and I think this will be still be going when my kids are ready to retire. And that's what it looks like after being all mixed up with my batter. I'm going to get this out of the way and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we are ready to put our batter in with our fruit. A little bit stiff for the <laughs> spatula to be stern. I might have to get my hands in there. But we'll start it off with this anyway, with a big spoon. So that's a that was a workout. Now we're just gonna fill these little trays up. It's not gonna rise that much. 
Okay, so I ended up using all six of the smaller ones and three of the larger ones. So what I'm going to do is pop this into my oven that has been preheated to 250 degrees and add that big uh, pan of water underneath on the bottom rack. I'm going to put these on the top rack above the water. We're going to bake that for probably about three to four hours. But I'm going to check that at about two hours. And we're going to stick a skewer in those. And when it pulls out and uh, it's moist but not got dough on it, we'll know it's done. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go stick these in the oven and I'll see you when they come out of the oven. Okay, so it's been about half an hour. They're still warm. But we want to get them out of the uh, trays and unwrapped. And I don't know if I just said it already, but those cooked for two and a half hours. I did bake them for two and a half hours. And that's probably because they're smaller tins. So I didn't need the full three hours to four hours on that. All right, we'll let those cool down completely, and I'll be right back. Okay, so these have totally cooled down now. So I'm going to brush them with brandy on all the sides. Let that soak in. And I got some cheesecloth, a big roll of cheesecloth from Walmart. I'm going to put these in a cheesecloth like that. I'm going to wrap it like that. Then we're going to soak that cheesecloth with brandy. That's one done. I'm going to stick it in this container here. Uh, let me get it where I can see, you can see it in the camera. That's a Tupperware deep thing. I'm just going to wrap all these up, do these all the same, and stick them in this and air seal it. So I'll see you when I get these packaged up. Okay, so there we have it. And I'm going to put the lid on that. Seal that up, and once a week, for at least a month, we are going to coat that cloth with brandy. And this is one of those rare videos where I can't test, taste test this right from there for you because you really need to let that fruit cake mature. So we're going to be doing the taste test in about a month, so I'll have to do a separate video on that. I used that full bottle of brandy within making the cake and everything and it is how many liters was that 750 milliliters 
Now, I'm not going to go out and buy another bottle of brandy because I tell you what, I got a secret. About three years ago, I bought some brandy and I bought some vanilla pods, a bunch of them, and I stuck it in this brandy thinking I'd make my own vanilla extract. So you know what we're going to brush that with from now on out for the rest of the month? We're going to brush it with this brandy with vanilla pods in it. I ain't open that for a while. Let's see what it smells like. Oh man, it smells so vanilla -y. Vanilla flavored brandy. I bet you that's going to be delicious on that fruitcake. So that's what we're going to brush it with once a week for at least a month. And this, I'll, I'll come back with you at the end of this week and we'll rebrush these so you can see me do a rebrush on them, see what it looks like. Then after that, you're on your own <laughs> until we try it out at Christmas. I'll see you then. Okay, so it's been almost a week. And I want to get this video out. So what we do is once a week, we're going to open these up and check these. And make sure that they're not getting dry. If the cloth is starting to get dry, which this isn't, but if it were, we would just brush a little bit more brandy on there just to moisten it up a little bit. We're going to do this once a week. And I'm just going to, it's just a light brushing this time, not, not a soak. We just want to keep it damp. Now, this is something I would recommend that you wear gloves with because we are curing this or maturing this so we don't know, want no bacteria from our hands getting on this although the alcohol would probably kill it but uh, you kind of know what I'm saying there. You don't want to take any risks of growing anything in there from your hands. So I would recommend wearing gloves when you handle these. Once a week for a month. So at the end of the month, I have to admit, I took a little bite out of that. And it was good. Even not matured. It was good. It's going to be much better once it matures. So I will finish doing this. And I'll do that once more a week for a month. And we'll see you about Christmas time. And we'll bite into this. I'll see you then.